Cool. Yeah, I, again, I guess it's about those things. Like, how do you, you know, as an artist who works a ton, has a family, mm. all that stuff, mm. how do you maintain the balance while also trying to, like, live and be successful and strive to do bigger and better things? Um, I, um, the, the, ba- well, let me, what motivates me to do this problem is probably the biggest driver to how, how, how I balance my life out. Um, because I have really strong, I have a really strong drive to, to, to just create, not necessarily draw, but just to create. It just happened that I'm using drawing as the creative tool. Um, so what keeps me going is just that drive to create and I'm constantly pushing myself. What my bar for that is my peers and it's not necessarily my family. It's just my, my peers. I'm looking at my, look at my peers and I'm like, okay, these, you this guy over here doing this, this guy over here is doing this and I'm over here doing this. Yeah. I need to, I need to bring it up a little bit, mm-hmm. you know? So I'm constantly chasing this yeah. unseen well, rabbit. I, I, I guess in, in comics too, especially, I'm sure it's very apparent cause you have guys like Jim mm. Mike Mignola or any of these like great yeah, artists yeah. who go and make movies, yeah, yeah. Make movies that are cultural icons, and yeah. Stuff. And you know, for a lot of people, that comparison might be too much to the point mm. where they might give up. You know, it's like I yeah. can never do that. And you know, again, I, I, like I don't think that that's ever a good reason to give up. But yeah, yeah. I'm sure the further along you get on this path, the more convincing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, like why not? A question that I ask a lot of people is, like, why not be an accountant? You know, it's like you can earn more money. You don't have to yeah, work less. You know, that's true. The side fell off. Oh, uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. All right. It's, um. Yeah. That, that's that is true. Actually, before I I became a, a professional artist, I was thinking of being a lifeguard. Yeah. I was also thinking of being a fireman. Yeah. Uh, I was also thinking of joining the Marines. Yeah. Uh, so it was one of those three that was going to be my lifelong goal. Yeah. Um, and then um, I got the the almighty phone call that said, hey, I want you to come work with us. Yeah. And that everything went to the side and I decided I'm going to pursue art yeah. because that's my, my number one passion anyway. And that's kind of what, how I like to explain to people is um, I draw for a living um, and it's a hobby. And I just happen to to be able to know how to make money yeah. using my hobby. Right. Everyone has a hobby. The people knit, people, you know, whatever. Some people are into fitness. Some yeah. people are into, you know. Dancing. Dancing, you know, just, you know, going for hikes, you know, what, whatever. But, you know, do you get paid to go on a hike? And if you really like it, how how do you find a way to, to get paid to, yeah. to go on a hike? You know, so it's kind of like that. That's where... I think that's where the ultimate challenge is, is, is in that because yeah. it, anyone can pick up a pencil and draw and create, but then what motivates them to keep them going? Yeah. You know, what, mo- what motivates them to say, okay, how can I turn this into a business? How can I, um, you know, how can I build something off of this yeah. and not, not just sustain me, but st- sustain my family? Yeah. yeah. You know, cause, um, it takes, it takes a challenge it, it, and it takes, it's, it's a long path it's yeah. nothing you can get in two 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 years or so unless you're like a, a savant you know this incredible artist that no one has ever seen before and suddenly you show up on the scene and everyone wants you right. you know then okay great you, you just made it in like two years you know a short amount of time you know um and i, I have seen it before too yeah. but typically it takes it takes a while yeah. we're talking 10 years it somewhere in that range before you're you're at this the level where you somewhat comfortable that you can kind of gravitate in that in that in that direction and grab something and pull something out of it um um and and there there are two sides to that too there are there's the digital side and then there's the traditional side where people are painting with paints and you know you know oils watercolors pencils charcoal that, that, that route. And then the people who jump on fault in Photoshop, clip studio, uh, you know, procreate and all these, these pro these programs also in the 3d direction, you know, you can get, get on blender and Maya and all these things, ZBrush, 
when you start going in that that direction, those are like the two different directions you can go with it. And typically, what divides that, what what decides that, is what year you were born. <laughs> yeah. The, the the generational, you know, uh, the 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 generation you're you're in. Uh, if you are like younger than like thirty years old, most likely you're gonna go in the di- the digital side. You know, if you're a little bit older, you're probably gonna go towards it. Yeah. Tra- traditional side because that's what we're used to. When I was in college, I was learning how to letter newspapers, you know, with, by hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to learn cursive. Yeah, well, and I, even, you know, even for me, it, again, elementary school, the teachers were like, you know, you're never going to have a calculator in your yeah. pocket, and now we have a super. And now, exactly. On your, well, I know on your everything. I know everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like, can Google it. You yeah. know, it's like that, you know, so. It, it really depends on the, the generation that you're from, you know. Yeah. Um, but and and the, the other thing that divides it is how long do you do you plan on being or on on actually making it? Yeah. You want to make it immediately, or do you 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 don't mind taking a longer route and and truly learn learning this craft? Yes. Yeah. Um, if you're if you take the longer route, um, it's going to take you a lot longer, but you, it, you you kind of fall in love with it a little bit more. It's more built in into your, your DNA. You know, the shorter route is the quick money type of yeah. route. Oh, I'm doing a job for $500. I'm doing a job for $2,000. I'm doing a job for $10,000. Some some jobs are like 30, 60,000. Yeah. I've heard of jobs that are 80, $250,000. So I've heard of jobs that are in that, that range. So it it, it, can, it can happen. You can make a quick buck, but how long can you sustain it? Yeah. You know, so that, that's kind of one of the things that, that I see. And if you go the short route, you 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 can find yourself at a company. You're locked. Oh, sorry, you're locked up at a company. <laughs> sorry, everyone. That you're um you're actually working on on a massive team. Yeah. With you know 50, 60, 80 people. Sometimes you're on a five man team. Yeah. When you're you're just there, you're working on this team, and you're 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 designing and creating and building 3D objects, or just just creating nonstop. Yeah. You know, um, but there's there's a hierarchy to it, and you have to pay your dues and uh, you know listen to commands and that type of thing. So if you're not that type of artist that you you you, you don't want to you don't want to follow that track and you don't want to listen to commands and have an art director above you, um, you know, then go. You, it's going to take you a lot longer. You're going to go the the tra- traditional route and you're going to be doing what you want to do on the outside. But that's pretty much the life of the starving artist. Yeah. Well, and, think about it. Well, and I, I guess going back to what you were saying earlier, like the way that somebody becomes successful mm. at art, I think, is doing it for a long time. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. about being the most talented. Like I'm sure you have stories from your early days of, you know, oh, I knew this guy. He was a great mm-hmm. draftsman, but you know, he didn't really go anywhere. He didn't really have much interest in it. He didn't yeah. have fun doing it. He just kind of gave up. Oh yeah. You know, and like the more fun that you can have doing the job, the more likely you're going to be successful because you're just going to be solving more problems over a long period of time. Mm-hmm. And again, I think that's the thing I'm trying to figure out is like, how does somebody manage to keep something like drawing on paper interesting and fun and, you know, something that they can do for, like not for five years, yeah, yeah. 40 years. For four years. Oh, yeah. And then be proud of living that life. Yeah. And live a fulfilling life. Yeah, this is, there's, uh, the, uh, I'm actually in the process of doing it as yeah. you speak, so um, uh, I, 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 I kind of know a little bit about this. So um, the thing is that you have to find your core, just not just in you, but in the project. You know, where, where are you in your life, in your, in your mind, in your current setting, your 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 living situation where are you there because that can be a motivation also because if you're um if you are if 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 you're constantly you know sleeping on someone's couch but you can draw all the time that's yeah. that's that's, a, that's a, a barrier right there that you have to that's going to play in your mind like okay i need to make a quick buck and and, and but i want to work on this job but i can't work on this job because i have to work on something that's going to pay me you know so it's you're kind of you know, balancing that that out, but um, but the thing is that once you find that core and you find that 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 comfort area, and you stick with it, you're gonna see it grow. You know, typically what I like to do is find a project. Yeah. Don't wait for a pro- project to come to you. 
you build your own project. So you build your own project, you decide this is where I want to go with it. Now, once you have a, pro a project, you have an IP, you have a character, you have a storyline, you're, you're thinking, okay, what am I going to do with this? You want to think about what platform do you want to display this on? Do you want to just keep all this internal and work on this for the next five years before you, before you, you plug it anywhere? Or you want to plug it in somewhere as you're building this, you know, you want to think about that. So you, you can do, you can do both. Um, if you plug it in somewhere, you're going to build an audience because you're going to have people following you and they're going to be watching you as you're building this. And they're going to say, Hey, you know, I've been there for 10 years now. When you first started, I remember when you first started, you only had like this and this and this and this, and now look up, look at this empire you've built, you know, so it can, that can come out of it, you know? Um, but the thing is that you want to be able to find what motivates you. Once you find that, and it can come from anything, it can come from finances, it can come from um, um, family, or family, the uh, family situation, you can come from health, yeah. it can come from, you know, a whole bunch of different factors that, that's out there that you can, that, that, that's used to, to help you defi define that. Yeah. Typically, what motivates me is, um, like I said, my peers and um, new current or upcoming problem projects that I know about, you know, I'm constantly scanning. I'm constantly looking around, constantly seeing, okay, what's coming up next What's coming up in five years What's coming up in, in two years What's coming up in three months. And as I'm looking, I'm thinking, cause my brain is constantly processing. So I'm processing. Oh, wow. Okay. So I can see where things are going. And that's just one side inside of it. I'm, so I'm looking at upcoming problem projects. Then I'm looking at what audience likes. What what is the audience like? And there's there's a variety of audiences out there. So what do you who do you want to target? Do you want to target you know this audience over here or that audience or that that audience? Or do you want to target two at the same time? You know, and then once you you, you find that we find out okay well, what audience you want to target, um um what what's out there that you that you're competing with, and you kind of look at both of them. That helps you hone in a little bit more on your project was to figure out, okay, I think I know where I need to go. So based on an economy, based on, you know, these new projects coming out and based on what this, the audience wants, I'm going to find fine tune this, this craft that I'm making to fit one of these models yep. or to fit all of them. Right. And then once you find, you fine tune and you fit it, um, you start to build and start going in that, in that direction. Uh, that's kind of what I did with, uh, brother's bond that's what i did with that uh it actually started off with um with uh, with just me uh having these frustrations in my 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 work habits and these frustrations in you know sort of where the industry kind of shoehorned me into into being because i was kind of uh pretty much known as the penciler yeah. so i was drawing all the time penciling all the time and then it got to a point I kind of got fr frustrated with it because I'm like, I want to expand. I want to do more than than just pencil and draw. I want to be able to 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 just create more and show people. Look, I can create. I can come up with new new things. So I used the, the my my you know, the platform that I was that was created for me as a penciler as a, as a springboard. And then I just jumped off and I kept going and I kept going and kept going. And I, next, you know, I had a, I had a, had characters. I had a storyline. I actually did some some footwork research where I had to fly out to Japan, and I, I know, I'm like meeting people, you know, taking pictures, taking videos, checking out the culture, doing everything. And then I, I once I got a true understanding of okay, this is kind of what it was like, the way how how you know the 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 Eastern side of things, how how they think. I'm like, okay, let me sh go, go back to the Western side of things and let me find some some yeah. like a happy medium. And once I figured that out, I'm like, okay, this is kind of where I wanted to go. And bam, I laid it on, laid it down, started going in that, in that direction. And he started catching our eyeballs. Yeah. People started noticing like, what's this, what's going on? This, this, is this an animation? Is this a cartoon? Is this, this, is this that? And then, uh, that's when Webtoon saw it and they, they picked it up yeah. and then it just kind of blew up from there. It turned into what it is and yeah. eventually became in, you know, and, and Eisner nominee. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's, it's one of those, one of those things. And I'm still currently working on it right now. I haven't stopped working on it. So. Well, I, I think the beautiful part about all that stuff is it starts out as an idea. It turns out with you being like, what can I do? What like, what can I manage? What's the thing that 
like my peers have done that I think I can do? What's something that's kind of outside my comfort zone that would be kind of a challenge and interesting and fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then going from there, and it, it starts out with like, you know, a conversation similar to the one we're having right now. Mm-hmm. You just by yourself in your room writing down notes. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I think part of the reality of all that is that like you were using the same tools that pretty much everyone else has access mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. And it's just your brain and your skills and the like the things that you've cultivated over your entire life to be able to develop this thing yeah. that takes you to, to Japan, that takes you to a new place, yeah, yeah. you know, get you recognition that you might have wanted, mm-hmm. get you like, you know, some income as well, probably. Yeah, exactly. You know? And it's like, I think that like for me, I and I know a lot of people struggle with this, but it's like when they have an idea, their first assumption is that it's a bad idea, whether it's like, you know, mm making their own IP yeah, yeah. or like writing a book yeah. or, you know, selling prints or whatever. Yep. You know? Yep. And, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, a, a big part of all this stuff is falling in love with the process and almost being completely detached from the outcome of whatever it is. Mm, you know, mm, mm. like if you were thinking about everything that could have gone wrong in the very beginning of Brother's Bond, yeah. that might have deterred you Definitely, from actually... that absolutely would have yeah <laughs> yeah yeah which, <laughs> so, which i think that's a hard thing to try to avoid when you yeah. have a family and yeah yeah with, with the, the family life uh it, it okay there you go <laughs> okay um uh, the, the, part of the part of the appeal of this whole thing to me is how ratty the whole band yeah, yeah, cast. It's yeah, like yeah. there's people outside and yeah, no, no. Um, we're duct taping a microphone. It's a microphone, of course. Um, <laughs> and the, the reason I like it that way is because I know if I made it better and mm. like kept the standards a lot higher, mm. there'd be more friction to me actually doing it and actually might do less. You know? Oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, um, what were we talking about? You're talking about uh, family life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Doing a creative project. Creative project. Uh, so I was thinking too was, um, you know, that juggle, that struggle, um, with the with the family life. It can be an issue. Um, I've seen marriages dissolve over this. I've seen families split apart over this. Um, it can be an issue. So there, there it is a struggle at certain points where you because. At, because at the bottom line, there is, there is that financial, you know, dilemma. You know, does that that you would, how am I going to make money out, off of this? Yeah. You know, um, um, and it and the 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 idea of the starving artist is absolutely real. It can happen. It's happened to me. Um, there was a, there were times when the past when I I, I couldn't even afford to, to buy socks. Yeah. There were times you would open my fridge and you would only see water and, and crackers. So I've been there, you know. Um, so I know what it's like um, to to sit to sit at home and draw and try to fig- figure it out. And some people don't even have a fridge to have the water and crackers. Some people are, you know, you know, sleeping in a car or sleeping from 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 uh, a, someone's house to you know just sleeping on their couch. You know, I've you know I've seen it before. You know, hey, you know, can I can I stay with you for a month? Can I stay with you for a week till I get off off my feet? I had a, a friend of mine did that to me. Yeah. He um, he he came out from uh from the East Coast and he was like, hey, you know, I'm I'm moving out here and I I need I I need a place to stay, you know, till I get on my feet. So I'm thinking he's gonna be there for about you know two weeks. Yeah. He was there for about three months, yeah. sleeping on my couch. <laughs> so the entire time he was there, I'm like, I'm I'm not just gonna have him sleeping on my couch. I'm gonna train this guy. So I, I I put him through a routine to train him to get him to a spot where he knows this specific technology where, where we knew this this company was hiring for. Yeah. So he learned it, and when he then when he was good enough, it took him about three months to get good. When he was good enough. He went out, took a test. He got test. He got a job. Started making his own money. He moved out. Yeah, you know, so that that pattern happens, and now he's he's flourishing. He's married, and yeah. you know, he's getting ready to have kids and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, it it, it happens. You know, yeah. so uh, I know people who were who were homeless, yeah. and they're they're huge art directors right now yeah. in, in in the industry. 
you know, so the people, I know a lot of them. So right. it, it happens to us as, yeah. as, as starving artists, you know, um, uh, one of my good friends was sleeping on my, my, my brother's couch. Yeah. That's how I met him. Right. <laughs> you know, he was sleeping on his couch and then and now he's like, he has like a $2 million home. You know, he's, he's blowing up, he's doing his thing, you know? Um, so it, 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 it's, it just takes some time to develop that, those, those skills. Um, but the family life, can be a struggle because if you're trying to do something and you're putting in your motivation, your, your all, your will, you're like, I got to do this because this is my heart. This is my soul. And I'm trying to get it done, but you're not seeing the benefits from, from it. You're not seeing any, any financial benefits from it. It can play a toll, especially with the kids, especially with the wife. It's, you know, when they, she, she's like, we need to pay for this. We need to pay for that. How are we going to figure this out? How are we going to do this? How are we going to feed the kids? How are we going to pay for rent in two months? Yeah. Those scenarios, those things can, can come up. Um, and then it starts to, to weigh on you and then you're going to want to shift gears. Next thing you know, you're putting aside this project that you, you've been working on. A project that should take you four months is taking you four years now because you, your time split because you're like I, I work a living on this project but I need to I need to feed my family so I'm going to go in this direction and I'm going to I'm going to you know I got to make some money over here yeah. and sometimes that direction where you're making money is not even in the art direction it could be you can be a plumber you could be whatever you know something completely different from art and you're going in that direction and you come home if you're working on art yeah. it can happen you know it happened to me you know um um what what it, it, the, when it was happening to me, I wasn't married at the time. I was, you know, single and, you know, just kind of doing, doing, doing my thing. But then it got to the point where I, I figured out how to make money out of my own, uh, with my own craft. Yeah. And there are systems that are out there that are built to assist an artist to the, today. It's, it's almost like to the point where you have no excuse. Yeah. You know, there's no excuse for you to, to be an artist and not find a way to make money out, out of it. The, there are too many systems out there to figure this out, you know. Um, so so to me, it's, it kind of, that's where the motivation kicks in. Yeah. Where's your motivation? Where's your, where's your drive? What direction are you, are you heading towards? Yeah. You know, how, what's, what, what's your skill level at? Because that, that plays a huge role because if you're trying to build something and you're, your skill level isn't 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 there. It hasn't. It's it's not matched with your drive. Yeah. It can weaken you because yeah. you you know you're powerful. You're like I want to do this. I want to build this. I want to build this. I want to build this. And listen, you look at the art and the art like it's suffering. Like mm. then you might want to sh learn to shift gears again. You know. So it's well. Yeah, I feel like a huge part of it actually has to do with the ego. Yeah. yeah. For like like in the sense, well in the sense that like. If you have a giant ego and you're afraid of being judged because mm. you want to protect your ego, you might be less likely to go and try making a YouTube video yep, yep, or do yep. a comic book or something. Yep. Like, you know, so we did that video on Proko mm -hmm. that, like, it was an afternoon with you and Hannah. Oh, yeah. Kevin Drew Batman and stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's like, you know, <laughs> that, that thing almost, like, collectively, the videos have, like, a million views. Or oh, it does? Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. Wow. And it's like, what the... the you know, that was just like a, hey, let's try it out. Okay, yeah, yeah. But from one perspective, it might have, you could have had the thought, like, I'm not good enough. Yeah, yeah. There are people that should be doing this. And, that, and none of that would have happened. None of it would have happened. If I, you know? if I was thinking in that direction. Well, and the people that watched the video that got a lot out of it mm -hmm. wouldn't have been helped. Yep. And, you know, all because of that fear, you know. And I want to, th uh, I want to thank Proco and everyone because I'm constantly getting people <laughs> pinging me all the time about those those videos. They're like, "Oh man, I love your videos. I love when you did this. I love when you did this. It helped me do this." And I have parents hitting me up wanting to teach their kids. Yeah, yeah, that's it, so cool. it's all over the place. So it's constantly. I, I, you know, I, I, I again, I think it's like the ego gets in the way of so many. Like, I think people are, in general, in my experience, mm -hmm. are way more capable than they give themselves credit for. Yeah, I think yeah. people, I meet people who are down and out and don't really feel great about themselves. Mm -hmm. and I talk to them about their ideas and I'm like, that's a fucking awesome idea. You know? <laughs> like if you just put in a little bit more work, you'd be able to yeah. be a multimillionaire. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's that's another thing too. A lot of people don't have the work ethics mm -hmm. to, to, to apply to this. You know, um, there is a, a fast food mentality that a lot of people have, you know. I want it now. I want it quick. You know, plug it in. 
I just want to do it once, and 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 I and and that's it. I don't want to do it any more than that. You know, they don't want they don't have the drive. They might do it for a week and then lose motivation, and then two three weeks down the road, they they, they some something else has come in. They they, they lose the interest. Yeah. I've seen it personally. I've seen it with the uh, 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 people that I've worked with. There's in projects I've started, and I'm like, all right, let's let's get this going. And I'm doing. I'm trying to build this with you know three other people. And slowly one falls off, two falls off, three falls off. Next, it's just me working on this one project that all four of us started. You didn't even choose. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, yeah. come on, guys. Where are you? I'm like, I have this to do. I have this to do. So it's like things happen, you know. Yeah. That's part of the game. You have to expect it, you know. So, so you have to be able to find that motivation. How do I develop something and keep it going? Yeah. Not just for a couple weeks, for a couple months a year, five years. Yeah. How, how am I going to keep this going for five years down the road? You know, that's kind of how you want to, you don't want to take five years to have it develop, but you want to keep it going for five years. But throughout the five years, you want to be able to have periods of points where things are released. Yeah. Cause you want to, cause you're building your audience. People need to see results. If they don't see the result, they're going to lose interest. Yeah. And so you want to show them, Keep it going. Show them again. Keep it going. Show them again. Keep it going. Show it again. So that's the pattern you want. You want to develop. You want to keep going. Um, and it takes time. Yeah. You know, I've been doing this for 20, 29 years now. This it's, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah I know. Can you believe it? <laughs> twenty nine years, man. What was I doing twenty nine years ago? I'm twenty seven. <laughs> longer than I've been alive. Twenty nine years ago, I was sitting in college, like. Uh, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I, I have no idea what I was going to do. And then I get a phone call, and it was off of the giant, you know, the, the phones with the, the cord. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> that was one of those phones, and I'm picking it up and had the big giant push buttons on it, land, the little landline. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, wow, okay, I got a phone call yeah. from Jim Lee, and I'm freaking out. Like, here's Jim Lee giving me a call. Yeah. Hung up the phone, ran out there, and celebrating. I'm like, I don't believe I got a call. And next you know, uh, 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 like literally like three months later, I'm on a tour. Yeah. It was like I was thrown right into this. Surreal, right? Yeah. It was like surreal. And it's been nonstop ever since. It's mm -hmm. been 300 miles an hour ever since. Yeah. It's. Well, I'm sure you wouldn't change a thing. Right? I, w I wouldn't change a thing. I actually, when I was thinking about this uh, a while back, because I actually, I, I, um, I, I was applying to go to, to Parsons. And um, I, I was accepted. And um, I, I also applied to go to another school called International Fine Arts College. And I was accepted there too. And I think, I, I think it was one more school I applied to. And I chose to go to the one that was closest to my, my mom's house. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the only reason I chose that. If I had chosen to go to Parsons or anywhere else, uh, I would have. I don't think this opportunity would have would have yeah. been. I would have been somewhere else. But yeah. I went to this specific school, and the two people in my class happened. They just happened to be in my class with me. Sean Ruffner and Brett Booth yeah. um, um, were sitting in class, and then Brett Booth pulls out Jim Lee X Men number one. He puts it on the table, and we're all looking at this like. Who is this guy? This guy's amazing. And he's like telling us all about Jim Lee and this and that. And he's like, yeah, this guy, he just hired me. And as soon, so as soon as we graduate, I'm going, I'm going to go work for him. Yeah. And I'm sitting there like, wow, we're getting, we're getting ready to graduate. We're like in the last week of school and he's already plugging himself into doing something. That's one of my peers. As I, I, I mentioned before, that when you see them do something, it makes you want to do something also. So yeah. you're constantly pushing yourself. So I've always had this drive inside inside of me way back since I was like 12 years old. Yeah. I remember. So and it just I just kept building from that. Next thing you know, um, I'm doing not the same thing, but I saw a path. Yeah. Before I didn't see a path because I was sitting in school, one of the best artists in the in the, in the whole school. Uh, and I'm sitting here like, okay, I still don't know what I want to do. Yeah. What am I going to do with life? I don't know. I, I know I can draw. So I want to draw for a life forever. And I had people suggesting to me to go airbrush on t-shirts at, at, at the flea market. Yeah. And I was thinking about doing that. Oh man. Okay. I think I'm going to go, I'm going to go do that. I'll learn how to be the best airbrush artist on, on the planet. I can yeah. do that. And 
you know, I can airbrush on cars. I was, I was, I was learning that too. Mm -hmm. I learned how to airbrush designs and patterns and art on cars. Mm -hmm. Uh, those were back then people was huge. People wanted, um, art on, on the hood of their cars. They wanted it on the side of the cars and the roof of the cars. So I was, I was learning to go in that, in that direction. And then here comes Jim Lee pulling me out of all that. Say, come, come work with me. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm out. I'm out. I'll see you guys later. I'm done. I'm getting away from the heat. I was in Miami at the time. I'm like, uh, no more heat for me. <laughs> it's too hot. Oh, yeah. I know. I, I, uh, and I've had people disagree with me on this, but I think everyone, especially now, has access to a similar kind of opportunity. You know, maybe not Jim Lee directly calling okay. them, but yeah, yeah. You know, like, if somebody reached out to you and just said, hey, Ryan, can I? have some advice, can I pay you money to teach me, like whatever, mm -hmm. you know, they, you actually might respond. Yeah. Um, you actually might, like if the person, if you like the person, they're really good, all this stuff, you actually might give them the, like, to the same tutelage that Jim Lee gave you. That's, that's literally what I'm doing right now. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, it's like, it, the internet is so powerful to where you yep. can reach out to somebody on Instagram, yep. one thing leads to another, and suddenly you have a job and yep. a place that you never thought you'd you'd even be able to dream of yeah 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 and that in fact what you said is what motivated me to to create my my workshop and yeah. so that's what i'm doing right now i i was thinking you know i was having a a, a conversation with uh wills portacio and and we were talking about just teaching and it's coming out you know how do we do this and i was i told him you know i've always had this motivation inside of me to help other artists you know, give them that hand up to help them, you know, let me show you how, how, how to do this. Um, and Wilson and I were talking about his school cause he had, he started up a school in the Philippines and, and I was like, you know, that's what I need to do. I need to mm -hmm. do that. I actually spoke to, uh, uh, your, your dad about it too. Oh, really? oh, <laughs> your, years ago, I spoke to him <laughs> crazy. about years ago but about that. And he was like, that's a really good idea. You yeah, think you should do it. He's like, that's the best idea you've ever come up with. And he told me that. And I was like, okay, that's cool. So, um, so, but I never really did anything at that time until I spoke to Wilson. That's when I was like, all right, I yeah. think it's time to pull the trigger. I'm not going to sit and wait, you know, for the opportunity. I'm going to go make this opportunity. So that's what I did. I built it and I did a test. I did, I, I did a test. I remember putting out a call and I said, I'm looking for three, three or five students. I think it was five students. I was looking for five students who wants, uh, who wants to learn from me. Yeah. I had 200 people to literally, yeah. but I was around 200 people apply within 24 hours. That's crazy. And so I was like, wow, I think I have something here. I think I need to, to, to keep, to keep this going. Yeah. So. So that's what I did. I kept going. I kept building, and now I have my own workshop, and um, and and it's it's thriving. It's going great. I'm, I'm running a, a huge class right now, and yeah. um, uh, I, and I'm getting ready to to run a getting ready to launch another one in like January. So, yeah. so yeah, we have more coming. So, yeah. Well, and again, it goes back to that simple idea of like, oh, and mm -hmm. I want to fucking do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to my friends about it. I'm yeah, like, yeah. You know, and then people give you advice, and then yep. eventually, like I talked to Stan about this. Where no, yeah. Like, you know, he, he, like, you know, he's obviously been very, very successful on mm -hmm. YouTube and stuff. And uh, he was saying, like, you just start, you do things when you feel brave for a day. And then once you've felt brave for a day, you've committed yourself to it so you can't stop. Yeah, yeah. You're going to do it. You put down money, all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. I, it, the, it's, it plays into the, that, that, that narrative that's out there that, that was in the, the movie The Field, Field of Dreams. Mm -hmm. It said, if you build it, it will come. Yeah. That is absolutely true, man. Yeah. It's absolutely true. You need to build it. Yeah. If you don't build it, if you, they, will, they, they will never come. Yeah. If you don't start your own channel, they will never come. If you don't start your own project, you're never going to see the audience. Yeah. If you don't develop something over here, you know, whatever it is, if you, you know, you have this dream of developing a restaurant, whatever it is, and you don't start it, you're never going to get any customers. Yeah. You, well, you just have to build it. Well, and going back to the idea that I think everyone has great ideas, mm. really. Like, it's not that hard. But the execution is the thing that's difficult. Like. I think part the tragic part about being a human is like if you spend all your time on a project, you can't be playing video games or like spending time with your family. Yeah. Or, you know, it's like you know, I, like well, you can, but you can't. You can't. Yeah, yeah. Time, like you have, to, you have you to like play less video. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I know what you mean. Or if you do one project, you might not be able to do another. <laughs> you have to be okay, like 
you know. When you get to my, my level, you can multitask, work on seven projects at once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, I literally do every day. Yeah. But, but the, you know, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned this because uh, you made me think about the uh, philosophy of this. You know, this is, some, this is something I've learned um, throughout, throughout life, throughout um, my course of just just doing the craft that I, I, I do, um, working with peers, seeing the motivation or the the the, the influence or or um, the the energy that, that comes from this audience, right? And just knowing from the time I was young the patterns that I've seen and 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 learned and and assisted with throughout life is that every single one of us, you, me, that kid over there, that old guy over there, the guy around the corner, the person in the other country we've never seen before, the group of people over there who's never picked up a pencil before in their life. We are all creative. Yeah. We are all of us, all of us are creative. I don't want to say we're all artists, but I want to say we're all creative. But and how do I know? If you think about it, you 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 look back to when so you you look at a child. You play some music. What is a kid gonna do? Yeah, they're gonna dance. They're sing. gonna do this. Yeah. They're gonna just move. They're just moving. Like yeah. where who where where's this coming from? Who where where's the energy coming from? That's that seed. That's a that's a sample of it of that small energy that's inside inside of us that wants to come out and wants to break free and says, I just want to do, okay? There's another way I like to explain it, is that if you've ever been to a mall and you you show, you show up to the mall, you have $100 in your pocket, and you decide, I need an outfit. Yeah. I'm gonna pick out a shoe, I'm gonna pick out a shirt, I'm gonna pick out a pants, and I'm gonna make it match, I'm making, mixing, you know, make it work. That shoe goes with that shirt, goes with a hat, you know, blah, blah, blah. And now you walk out of the store with a, a brand new outfit and you put it on, you feel good. And you're like, okay, great. That's the basics, the essence of design right there. Yeah. You didn't create it, but you found these pieces and you put it together to make something new yeah. out of this. So you, you, it's just like, it's like a puzzle. It's like a Lego. You get this Lego over here, this Lego over here, Lego, you, you mix and match. You didn't create the Legos, but the Legos exist. And you mix and match it and you turn it into something. Yeah. That's, that's basically what it is. Okay. And I learned that from years of doing just d design work, you know, creative work, you know, constantly, you know, drawing covers or creating characters for a video game or whatever it is. That's literally all I'm doing. I have a base figure. And I'm thinking, okay, with this base figure, I need to design a character. I need to come up with an outfit. So I'm going to try this shirt. No, I don't like that shirt. I'm going to try this other shirt. Okay, I like that one. I try this pants. Try the other pants. I'll try this hat. And that's all I'm doing. Yeah. It's just mixing and mashing. But I just happen to, to, to do this using a specific tool. Yeah. Pencils or a, a, a Wacom pen. Yeah. <laughs> you can literally be anything. You can literally be anything. You, you don't know, just happen right. to. I just have. You can use clay. You can do whatever. You know. I just happen to use this specific tool. Yeah. But you know. But we're all cre We all have it inside us. It's just at Fred. From the time we're young, we learn to either channel that energy somewhere or somewhere somehow someone suppresses it. Yeah. And that suppression can come from your parents. It can come from. Your peers, the people who surround you, these people are are suppressed. They've been have they've had their their energy suppressed. They're gonna naturally want to suppress you also. Yeah. Next, you know, you you're somewhat creative, and now other things has taken over. Now you're you want to do you want to go do this or do that versus what you you truly really wanted to do when you were five years old was I were I really wanted to paint, but now I don't paint anymore because you know I've been doing this other thing. You know, so you kind of give it up. But the seed was there from the time you were born. It's grown. It was there. Yeah. And but if you nourish it, and you push it in one direction, you can be an artist. You can be a penciler. You can be an inker. You can be a musician. You can be an actor. You can be a performing arts dancer. You could do whatever. You can yeah okay. whatever it is. Yeah yeah. Right. But you're pushing that energy in some somewhere. Yeah. 
It's that, that's the seed I'm talking about. We all have that. It's just that from the time I was born, I was handed a pencil by my sister yeah. and my sister is six years older than me. Yeah. So she was, I would look at her draw and I'm like, wow, I want to draw like that too. Yeah. So I would try drawing like how she was drawing. And she showed me how to shade with my pen, my thumb, and you, know, you, you put the pencil down and you smudge it. She was showing me all that. How do you how do you capture the darks and the lights? Yeah. And I was I was doing this when I was in the third grade, learning from her. Yeah. By the time I was in the fourth grade, actually I was doing it way before that. I was doing it, I think it was like the second or first grade I was doing this. By the time I was in the fourth grade, I was good enough with paints that. Um, they would pull me out of class to do special art projects yeah. for the whole school, yeah. you know? And I'm like, I used to think, oh, okay, well, cool. I, I, they, they really like my art. Uh, cool. And I kind of saw it, I saw it in me since then. I had that nourishment around me to help yeah. build me up as an artist. Right. My mom, um, put me into per performing arts that helped me express that seed in another direction. Yeah. You know, I also started to learn how to play the saxophone. That was another expression right there. Yeah. You know, so I'm just like learning all these different ways of expressing it. And then in time, I, when I came back, when in time it all came to, together. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I'm putting it all together and I'm shooting in one, one, one direction. Yeah, well, I, I think a key point of all that stuff is the, like the positive feedback loops. Yeah, yeah. Like people telling you you're doing a good job. Yeah. You're getting, you know, accolades and all this stuff from your peers and all that throughout your entire career, mm -hmm. which makes you want to do it more, makes it more fun. Yeah. Um, which, in turn, makes you a better artist. Yeah. You know, it, it's kind of like a snowball effect. You know? Yeah. That's that's this is that's, I'm glad you mentioned it because that's something I like to tell people. Um, when I first came into this industry, I came in as a penciler, and I started penciling. But I wanted to learn how to ink, so I would look at Scott Will Williams, yeah. and I would ask him, how do you do this, how do you do that, how do you do this? He would tell me, demonstrate, I'll go home and practice. Yeah. So I started practicing, started getting better at it, and then I would look at the colors, and I'm like, how do you do this, how do you do this, how do you do that? They would tell me, I would go home and practice, and I started getting better at coloring. Eventually in time, I started shifting towards 3D, and I started to learn, actually I got into 2D animation first. I started to learn After Effects. Once I learned that, I'm like, oh, okay, this is cool. I learned how to take the same thing that's been drawing, slap it into this, like this Photoshop type of motion pro program and make it move. Yep. So I started to learn these things. Then eventually it shifted into 3D and I started learning 3D. And I start, once I learned that, I started to learn uh, how, to, how to build models, how to animate models, how to do this. And then eventually I started to learn not just does that, I started to learn how to storyboard, which I was, I already knew how to draw because I've been drawing for years and now I'm storyboarding. So I'm putting everything I've been drawing in motion and I'm thinking to myself, okay, now I'm, I'm shifting gears again. I'm now going in that direction. And it's constantly, constantly shifting, constantly moving. And part of that game was actually working on actual projects. It, you know, and, and if there, there wasn't an actual project, I would create one. Yeah. And then when I created one, I'm putting everything I've been learning into this project. Yeah. And that's helped to build me even more and more and more. After doing that for one, two, five, six, ten years, now I'm, t I'm ten years built. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm a lot stronger than I was before. And I remember what I was thinking, oh, I'm strong. ZBrush came into the game. And I'm like, wow, and now I have to learn ZBrush. Yeah. And I, I remember learning ZBrush in like no time because I understood, I was like, oh, this is very similar to how you would do the bevels in Photoshop. Yeah. So I remember thinking that. I was like, oh, okay, this is easy. Yeah. Okay. And then I started learning and I started pushing and pulling like that because I'm thinking, yeah. thinking already, I, I, I'll have something to piggyback off of that I've been learning for years. I can piggyback off it and go, but I'm doing it in 3D now. And I'm learning that. And I kept going and I would watch tutorial, tutorials and just kind of took me like, six weeks and I was like pretty good at, at yeah. ZBrush already in like six weeks because yeah. I had all these platforms already to help me learn. So that's one something I like to tell people is just learn as you don't have to be a master at it. Just learn enough to get to the point where you're comfortable. You don't have to, you don't have to know every single thing. Just learn enough that you're comfortable. Okay. Move on to something else. Yeah. Learn 
to your comfortable, move on to something else. Learn your company and you keep that pattern going. You don't have to be a master at it. In time, you will master all of it. Yeah. You just don't give it up. Keep working on it a little bit at a time. Yeah. Like this, in time, it's just built. Next thing you know, 25, 29 years like me will go by and now you like, Oh wow! I I'm good at a lot of things. I'm good at a lot of things. Well, I, I, I've, I've, you know, I, I think that's an important point too. Is like I, I meet a lot of art students who are obsessed with like something like figure drawing or mm-hmm. perspective or something, and they feel like they have to master the skill of anatomy and figure drawing before they can move on to telling their own stories. You know? Yeah, which is yeah, I understand that perspective, but then they're trying to draw like they're they've been doing it for thirty years. Yeah, without moving on to anything else you know mm-hmm. and I, I i think it's almost like a um like over preparation for like whatever they see as being the end goal mm-hmm. as as a professional artist you mm-hmm. know yeah yeah you don't have to know everything it's sort of best to f- stick in one direction because you don't want to get distracted yeah stick in one direction for a short time it could take couple weeks it could take a couple months and just kind of get good at it and then when you get good at it okay now you can open the door for something else and keep going in that in that direction you know i kind of learned that back when i first started to learn uh martial arts yeah um i learned i i was i used to go to this one martial arts school i'm learning how to punch and kick and block and all this stuff and learn how to spar and I took that for about three months. And then it got to a point where I just stopped going, but I didn't stop practicing. Yeah. I went somewhere else and I was practicing with another artist, with, with other martial artists who were doing different styles and I'm learning their style now. Yeah. And I shift gears and go to another style and learn that style. And that, so I kept learning all these different styles. So, you know, and that's how I ended up knowing from, cause I started off as American, American kickboxing then it went from from there to um, Jeet, Jeet Kune Do, yeah. and from Jeet Kune Do I went to um, Taekwondo, and from Taekwondo I went to Kempo, and from Kempo I went to Muay Thai, and from Muay Thai I went to Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Then I went back to Taekwondo, and then I went back to Muay Thai, and I kind of stuck with Muay Thai, yeah. and that's pretty much where my my, my ground game is at yeah. now to this day. But I have all this this these these skills from all these things. So I've been putting all these skills all into my Muay Thai, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm when I'm training, because I've been learning a little bit of Kip Kempo, a little bit of, you know, jiu jiu jitsu and and then you just kinda of put it all together. Yeah. You know, kinda of like that. That's the same pattern with art. You just learn a little bit of everything and then you kinda of, you, you put it together. Yeah. You can make something out of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And again I think a big part of it is um actually moving on and actually using it as a tool versus using it as like a, I don't know, to just a thing to do instead, you know? Yeah. 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 It's, it's, this is a, this is a fun game. Um, you know, um, the, the, the thing about art that makes it fun for me is not the money. Uh, the money will come. You just have to build a great project, do it with good art and the money will come. So it's not the money that makes that motivates me is the opportunity. The opportunity, the chance to create and make something that no one hasn't seen yet. Yeah. No one has, you know, that, where, where's this coming from? You know, why, why, you know, all this comes from my, my background, the stuff, the cartoons I watched when I was growing up, you know, my peers that I'm around to this day, you know, uh, and I'm constantly just like pushing and building and pushing and building. And then when I'm looking at new technology that's out there, I'm like, oh, wow, I got to fit my heart to fit this. To, to match this technology now and you kind of go in that direction and then you just and so the the game changes yeah. art change changes that means you will always be changing you will always learn something new when you're 90 years old when i'm 90 years old i'm still going to be learning something new if i make it to 90 but we'll we'll we'll, we'll be still be doing something yeah and i'll be still be learning something at that age just creating and constantly because by, 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 by then, I'm going to be targeting a brand new audience. Yeah. The people who are, you know, five years old right now, in a couple of years, I'm going to be targeting them. They're going to be, you know, 25, and then I'm going to be tar- tar- targeting a, a 25-year-old audience at that, that moment. So I have to stay re- relevant within 
these generations. So I have to learn to understand them, how they're thinking. And a lot of that is based on the, the technology. You can learn that through, you know, social media and all that other stuff and just kind of just get yeah. used to it, you know? Yeah. So that, that's kind of how I, how I run my game. That's how I do things. And, nice. and I just keep going, you know? That makes so. sense. Cool. Uh, I'm going to see how long we, we've been going for. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We've been going for a full bit. It was 11, 12. Okay. About, about an hour. Yeah. Because we started a little bit after 10. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you want to keep going or... Um, how, how much longer do you, I, I, I go is until, 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 until whenever we yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, like, um, well, I was going to head to the gym, so. Oh, yeah, no, here, yeah, well, <laughs> and my, no, my gym's like right there. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't want to cut into your, uh, time. yeah, yeah, do you want to go ahead and wrap it up? Do you, um, oh, you, you uh, what, do you, what else did you want to talk about? But pretty much all that stuff. That's know? it? The That's whole it? point of it is is like more talking about... So you were like a closeout or, or what? Or um, or that's it? Yeah, yeah. That uh, was it? Well, that's just how it goes. Yeah, yeah. And cut. And, and, and right now... Um, <laughs> and, I mean, we, 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 could, we could just add that very abruptly. <laughs> and kind of funny. <laughs> Rough and cut. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, well, the whole point of this is to talk about creativity as a whole. Yeah. You know, trying to like... For the people that are listening, you know, I think that uh, you probably do have a project that mm. you can go and start. It's just a matter of going out and like having enough faith in yourself and putting in the work to yeah. actually follow through with it. Yeah, that's the thing. You stick to it. Try not to get distracted. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of things around you can can, can be distracted. These are the things that's going to carry you throughout your career. Yeah. Your skill level and your connections. Yeah. Once you have a good balance of those two, yeah. I have great skills and I can connect. You're going to go far in this industry. If you have great skills that you can't connect, you're just going to be a guy in a, or a girl in the corner with great skills. If you can connect, but your skills isn't there, you're still going to get the job because you can connect. Because there are tons of people out there, tons of companies, tons of avenues, tons of positions out there that are looking to fill. And you might not be the most qualified person, but you can connect. Yeah. And you can get in there. So... So, so connection is prob probably the biggest thing to this. Yeah. You know, how will you gift a gap? How can you, how can you sell a product? How can you take a product and connect it with an audience? Mm -hmm. or, and the audience could be an audience of one, mm -hmm. or audience of ten thousand, or ten mil million, whatever it is. You know, how do you c connect that product with that au audience? So once you figure that part of it out, it'll make you. It it it, it actually opens even more doors. Yeah opens more doors and next thing you can start to see the revenue coming in yeah. and they'll come in a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. And then you'll look back and you're like, Whoa, I just made all this, yeah. you know? So it can happen, you know, but the skills, w skills is what the, the, the connections is what plugs you in yeah. and the skills is what keeps you going. Yeah. Right. That's basically it. Yeah. And that's my cue. Nice. Right? Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, uh, thanks again. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, how should people follow you? Uh, so you can follow me at uh, RyanBenjamin.com, or if you look at my handle, it's uh, at Ryan, B-N-J-M-N, or just go to ComicProBootCamp.com, and you can message me there. Um, I'm, I'm on Instagram mostly, um, and I'm hardly ever on Facebook. Well, a little bit on Twitter, but I'm mostly Instagram is where I'm at, so... But so if you're if you're a budding artist and you do want to get into this game and you want to learn um, uh, just the basics of this and, and see see where you're at and get criticism, criticized, crit criticism, you want to get crit criticized or critiqued by four professional artists come to Comic Pro Bootcamp. I, I, That's what you want to do. I uh, highly recommend it. Yep. Oh, four great artists and everything. Yep. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, thanks again, man. Yes, sir. All right. All right, cool.